God is so good. And um, as Mike said earlier, we had a large number of our teens go to spring retreat, and we're just extremely excited about that. Um, more than 60 teens went to retreat with somewhere between 10 to 15 leaders that went to retreat. So that's why you see this emptiness up here this morning. It's be- not because people didn't show, but because God's doing ministry in another place this morning. And so we're excited for all he's doing and um, in those lives. Uh, I've already heard good things. Amen. So I'm not sure if everybody heard, but a a lot of people from our church gave so that these teens could go. And so thank you. A big thank you. Give yourselves a round of applause for helping them to make their way. Amen. So this morning, I'm just uh, once again in front of you. And I don't get to do that very often, uh, but I'm excited this morning. And hopefully you'll stay and hear me uh, and and not go out to the lunch crowd. Uh, But today we're going to be talking about living a life of obedience. And our scripture today is something you'll be very familiar with, and it's from Genesis 22, 1 through 19. And you'll be familiar with this story because regarding Abraham. And the scripture goes this way, sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain that I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up. He loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place that God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and he saw the place in the distance. He said to his servant, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and he said to his father, Abraham, father, yes, my son. Abraham replied, The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place that God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and he laid him on top of the altar on top of the wood. And then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up and there in a thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day, it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I'll surely bless you. And make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the shore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies. And through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you obeyed me. And then Abraham returned to his servants and they set off together for Beersheba. And Abraham stayed in Beersheba. This morning you are probably wondering where I'm going with this this morning. And 
before we go any further, I want to just just define for you obedience. And it's stated this way. It's an act or instance of obeying. And this morning we're going to start off by looking at Abraham's obedience to God. Now in Genesis 22, 2 through 3, we just read, it starts off, God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Now before we continue on down this path, I want you to get this image in your head. God is testing Abraham to see his faith. And I don't know about you, but me, it would be very difficult for me to take my only son for a sacrifice. So I want you to imagine this. He starts off, and Scripture says that he went early the next morning, and he loaded his donkey. And I got to thinking about this piece in particular. Why did he wait till the next morning? When God called him, did, why didn't he just immediately go? And I believe that the answer is, He knew what type of journey he was headed for. And he needed time to prepare. This particular trip would have taken a few days. And I'm not sure about you, but being married, I I think to myself what that night would have looked like. So I've started to prepare for this trip that God's called me for. And um, I'm talking to my wife. Well, I imagine the questioning went something similar to this. Where are you going, honey? Well, God's told me to go on a trip. Well, where are you going? Well, he said he's going to show this to me along the way. How long are you going to be going? Well, approximately three or four days one way. So uh, at least a couple of weeks. Well, what about all of the duties that have to be done here? Who's going to be responsible for those things? Well, the Lord will provide. But can you imagine what, on the other side of things, from Isaac's perspective? And I I got to thinking about this. Canton was in here a little bit earlier. I don't know if he's still in there or not. He said, don't call him out, but I'm going to do it anyway. There he is, way back in the back, because he didn't want Daddy to call on him. (laughs) But I I want you to think about this. I know for a fact my son would have all kind of questions about this trip. Okay? So I I would go to my son, Canton. Tomorrow, we're going on a little trip. Well, where are we going, Dad? Well, we're going uh, to a place that God's going to give me. Well, what are we going to do when we get there, Dad? Well, God has asked me to make a sacrifice. Well, sacrifice what, Dad? And you see where I'm going. It would have taken more than just one person's obedience in this this situation here. Then God said, take your son, your only son that you love, Isaac, go to the region of Moriah, sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on the mountain that I'll show you. And early the next morning, Abraham, he got up and he loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants, his son Isaac. When he cut enough wood, he set out for the place that God had told him. Abraham didn't question God. He could have. But God said, go, and Abraham picked up and he left. But first he had rested. This trip from Beersheba to Mount Moriah would have been about 55 miles, and it would have taken multiple days. And just as Abraham prepared for this trip, I say to you too, we must be prepared for what God would have us to do. 
as a result of Abraham's obedience, the angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time. This is from Genesis 22, 15 through 18. And he said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, because you've done this and you didn't withhold your son, your only son, I'll surely bless you and I'll make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the shore. And your descendants will take possession of their cities, of their enemies. And through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you obeyed me. Obedience doesn't just affect us. When we're obedient or disobedient, it affects everyone in our realm around us. Secondly, Isaac's obedience to Abraham. See, Isaac spoke up. He said to Father Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb? And Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb. Can you imagine this? They've walked for three days. They come to the place, and Abraham, he sees the place that God has led him to, out in the distance. And it's going to take a considerable amount of traveling time still. And so he packs the, the firewood and the knife and everything on his son. And his son carries it for the distance. And that whole time, as I said before, I can imagine the questions that have come from his son. Dad, I, I still don't See the sacrifice. Where's the sacrifice? As he travels down the, the road toward the mountain. As he's making that trip, they finally get to the place where they're on the mountaintop and there's still no sacrifice. And I'm sure by now Isaac, in his mind, has figured it out. he realizes that it's going to be me unless God does something. So this morning, I would say to you that even Isaac, at that point, he had to choose to be obedient or not. He had to choose to obey his father, Abraham, and trust that Abraham had that relationship with his father, God. What respect that he must have had for his father. This morning, I would ask you, as fathers, as grandfathers, could this be said of you? Would your children feel this way about you? have that much respect and admiration for you because of your relationship with the Lord. But Isaac did. And he physically got up on top of the wood and they were preparing for the sacrifice. And I want you to envision in your mind, let's just say this altar represents the stack of wood and it's piled up and on top of that is my son. The son that God had promised. The son that waited a, a hundred years to have. But God gave him to him, Abraham. God gave them to Sarah. And they were obedient to what the Lord had asked them to do. But Isaac is laying here. And I can imagine in my Abraham, he gets here and he's swinging. And Abraham, Abraham, here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord.
Let's move on a little bit further. Because with obedience, there's also disobedience. And I want to take a look at the original cause of all of this. And it all started out with Adam and Eve. Romans 5, 8, 18 through 19 says it this way. Consequently, just as one trespass resulted in the condemnation for all people, so also one righteous act results in the justification justification and the life for all people. For just as through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners, so also through obedience of one man, the many will be made righteous. That excites me this morning. I hope that that gives you hope this morning. We don't have to choose that life. We don't have to choose that path. God gave his only son so that you had the choice. But what is your choice? See, this, this morning, you still have a choice to disobey. You have a choice to go down that wrong path. Many of us have. Many of us have been there. Many of us have done things that we regret and we can't take back. But you can have the choice where you come to a place where you recognize Jesus for who he is and what he did for you. And you have that opportunity for change. A life change. An obedient heart. Genesis 3, 17 through 19 says, God said to the man, you listen to your, what your wife said. Normally that would be a good thing for us now. You listen to what your wife said and you ate fruit from the tree which I commanded you not to eat. So I'll put a curse on the ground and you'll have to work hard for your food. In pain you'll eat its food all the days of your life. And the ground will pro produce thorns and weeds and you'll eat the plants of the field. You'll sweat, work hard for your food, and later you'll return to the ground. You know, sometimes I just wish I could go back and shake Adam. <laughs> Let's just be honest. If it wasn't for one man, one man, this whole life could be different. But God still gave us a choice. He still gave us a way, sending Jesus. Let's look up a little bit at, of Eve, because she was also at fault. And then God said to the woman, I'll cause you to have trouble when you're pregnant. When you give birth, you'll have great pain, and your husband will rule over you. Some of you ladies are upset now, too. Because some of y'all want to hurt Eve, too, because you know what that pain is. Amen. Some of you will have to ask me a story about what I told Harmony one day. I, I, won't, I won't do it to this morning, but you'll have to ask me that story. She has fear of ever having a child. I'll just put it that way. I just explained to her the truth about Eve. <laughs> uh, these are consequences of original sin. And we're still battling these consequences today. Here's the last part of the consequence. It's banishment. So the Lord forced Adam and Eve out of the garden to work the ground from which was taken. And God had forced the humans out of the garden and he placed angels in a sword of fire that flashed around in every direction on its eastern border. This kept people from getting to the tree of life. You know, here's one point I want you to really catch. Adam and Eve, they got banished from the garden. But today, you and I, when we disobey, 
we're going to be in a real hell. And I don't want to see any of my friends and family to go there. Where have we missed out, church? We're missing that desire to see lost people come to the Lord. That passion and that, that longing to see lost people come to know him, it's slowly and slowly disappearing. And that's why it excites me so much to see so many of our teenagers going and learning and hearing about the Lord this weekend. Because they're starting to get it. But the problem is we are supposed to already have an understanding. We're supposed to help them. We're supposed to encourage them. We're supposed to help guide them so they don't go through the same path that we went. Are we doing that? Are you doing that this morning? All that you can do There's a real heaven and a real hell. And it's not talked about enough. But we can walk on streets of gold with our Lord one day. Or we can be in a lake of fire for the rest of eternity. And my choice is clear. I'm not sure what your choice is. But today, you have the opportunity that you can choose correctly. And accept him. So what does it take? Choosing obedience. First, obedience requires availability. Abraham, he was available. God called. Abraham responded. Lord, here I am. Here I am. It was a place of surrender. Surrender. For him. It should also be that way with us. Have you come to that point where God has asked you to do something and you've had to make that choice to obey or not and say, Lord, here I am? I have many times in my life. One of those times was to come here to Eastgate. About 16 years ago, Tanisa and I were engaged and were looking to get married. And Pastor Shannon was already here coming to Eastgate. And he asked us, will you join me in ministry? Will you help? Sure, what do you need me to do? Well, I want you to help with our youth and do music for our ministry team. Sure, Pastor, I'd be glad to do that. And maybe because of our uh, enthusiasm for life and not knowing better, we packed everything up, just like Abraham. We packed it all up. We left and we came down here with no jobs, with no knowing what was next, no place to live. But God provided And he's provided ever since. But it takes that first step of obedience. My story, Tanisa's story of our lives together could have been completely changed because of one decision, one choice. We might not be with you today. I might not be a pastor today because of one choice. What is that choice for you? What has it been in your life? What decision is it that God has called you to? What does that will that God has told you is a part of your life? What does that look like? Are you in the center of God's will? I don't know. It's questions that you have to answer. But I want you to extremely think about this this morning. Because when I look at my life so far, 
I see all the path that God took me down. And I see exactly why he did what he did to get me to where I am. I also see the mistakes that I made along the way. But he's corrected me. And I've been obedient to listen. So has that been your story? Is that where you are in your life right now? Or are you in a different place? Have you not listened to that call and not been obedient for the things that he's asked you to do? Today is a chance, one more time, for surrender. It's a chance you too can just give it all to him and say, Here I am, Lord. I surrender it all to you. Choosing obedience, it requires commitment. See, Abraham, he was willing to make the sacrifice. When God called him, he went. Where he said, he, he went. He did what God had asked him to do. Even if God wouldn't have spared Isaac, Abraham was ready. He was committed to what God had asked him to do. We must also be willing to go wherever God calls us to go. How many of you today, don't, don't raise your hands, but how many of you today, if God called you right now, and he said, I need you to drop everything, leave your family, leave your possessions, leave your jobs, leave it all, and follow me, and go who knows where, I'll tell you when you get there. How many of you would go? How many of us really would go? We would drop everything. God, I give you my job. It's yours. I give you my family. It's yours. I give you my possessions. They're yours. It's not my stuff. It's his. It's all his. And we've got to come to the realization of that. Guys, we're missing it. We missed it for a long time, myself included. We get so focused on things that the world has to offer and the lies that the media wants to tell us and all the drama and things going around this world. But it really boils down to this. Where am I here? Where am I here? Am I where I need to be at that point in God's will, where he's asked me to be? Am I hearing his voice? Am I listening to his voice? Commitment is defined this way. It's the state or the quality of being dedicated to a cause. But I would tell you this morning, you can be dedicated to doing a lot of things for the cause of Christ without being obedient to Christ. I'm going to say that again, because I want you guys to catch that. You could be dedicated to doing a lot of good things for Christ without being obedient to Christ. There's a lot of people that have been told specific things to do for the Lord. And for some reason or another, we've said no. And that's put up a barrier between us and him. Today is a chance. It's one more chance to break that barrier down and say, God, going forward, I will trust you. I'll do what you ask. It's one more chance. Lastly, choosing obedience, it requires faith. Abraham was indeed a man of faith. Genesis 22, 8, Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. I can't imagine being in that position. I don't know what that looks like. I don't know how I would feel. I want to believe that if I was in that situation that I would do what God asked me. But I don't know. I believe that God will give you grace in those situations. 
He shows you when you get there what you need to complete the task. And he gives you the tools. And it's up to us to follow. We must believe that God's promises are true. I'm reminded of a song. It's an old hymn. It says, I'm living by faith in Jesus above, trusting, confiding in his great love. I'm safe from all harm in his sheltering arms. I'm living by faith. I feel no alarm. I care not today what tomorrow will bring, if shadows or sunshine or rain. But the Lord, I know he rules over everything. And all of my worry is vain. Guys, if he owns it all, if he ha truly has our families, then why should we be discouraged? Why should we be uh, full of, of worry, full of fear, when he's empowered us? This morning, as I said, it's another opportunity. It's one more chance. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. I heard this morning a, a story. There was a graduation that just happened that there was a shooting. We don't know what tomorrow looks like. And we're not guaranteed that tomorrow. We're only guaranteed right now. And we might have a few more minutes and God could come back. I don't know. Where are you this morning? Are you going to choose this morning to live a life of obedience for him? Or are you going to continue down the path of disobedience? That choice this morning is yours.